Hi guys, this is going to be definitely the longest video on my channel. I decided that there are so many people struggling with Amazon KDP, so I want to create a full guide where you can learn the whole process, from finding a niche with well-balanced demand and competition, through creating a great product with a nice cover and well-prepared interior, up to uploading the final version of your book on KDP with a great SEO title and keyword. So practically from this one video, you will learn everything about Amazon KDP. Just before we get started, this guide is going to be split into different sections, so if there is something you already know, you can simply skip to another sections that would be interesting for you. And yeah, that's all I gotta say in our little introduction, let's get into the actual video. Hi everyone, sorry to interrupt the video, I just wanted to let you know that I've started offering print-on-demand niches with low competition, all of them are researched by me, so here is more or less how it works. You can subscribe for $8 per month through the link in the description, with this subscription you'll have access to all of the niche files and inside of such niche file you can find a niche name, related tags, keywords, actual number of competition and the link to explore the niche so you can see what kind of designs you should create to make sales. For people wondering whether this will be evergreen or seasonal niches, the answer is both. I will upload both seasonal and evergreen niches there. New niches are added frequently throughout the month so over time you'll have access to hundreds of unique niche ideas for just $8 a month. My goal is to offer something valuable at a good price to help you succeed. So we are starting with this general idea of what Amazon KDP is and how you can create books and make money from them. Amazon KDP is basically a publishing platform created by Amazon where independent authors can upload their book and sell them in a print-on-demand model, meaning the copy of your book is going to be printed and sold and delivered to the customer only when someone purchases it. KDP is the leading platform when it comes to selling books online without any additional costs. There is no real competition competition or alternative you could use. Sure, there are other websites where you can sell your books, but generally Amazon is a huge online marketplace with more than 3 billion visits every month and that is why it creates the perfect environment to sell your product, so there is no need to look for alternative. So now we're going to talk about what type of books you can actually sell on KDP. There are a few types of books you can sell on Amazon KDP, like for example Kindle ebooks, which are digital versions of your book. Uh, unfortunately, this guide won't cover Kindle ebooks as it is a bit more complex and especially for beginners who are just starting out on Amazon it may cause some difficulties to create such product but instead we're going to focus on two other types which are paperbacks and hardcover books. Both of these types are physical versions printed by Amazon and delivered to the customer. They are very similar to each other and the main difference is the cover type Amazon is going to use to print your book. So obviously for paperback the cover is going to be soft and this type of book is perfect for saying something like low content and no content which means coloring books this one is a very popular product on amazon with absolutely insane demand and sale potential but we're gonna get to it a bit later but also activity books journals notebooks so these are something we call no content or low content books on the other hand hardcover books are obviously going to have a hard cover and they are great for creating books such like recipe books fantasy books generally any other other longer format or like reading format so something we won't be using to, to note down something or to color anything I think you get the difference here you can also sell your books in both versions paperback and hardcover so after you create a paperback version you can additionally add a hardcover version just by creating a bit different cover so you'll need to change dimensions a bit so they fit the hardcover version but yeah it is always possible to add additional hardcover version to your book now we're gonna cover a very important section what is a niche when you've already made up your mind that you want to become a KDP seller you've got to pick up a topic for your books so this is where you come across the term niche a niche is a specific type of book let me give you like a quick example here let's say you decided to create a coloring book for kids but it can't just be a general coloring book without any topic where you would just at random coloring pages and hope to make sale. Instead, you need to have a more targeted approach. So you have to create a book about something like, let's say, dinosaurs, cats, space, cars, anything that would aim for a specific group of people. This is extremely important. And why? First, Amazon will know how to rank your product under what category, keywords, what audience to target, etc. Second, because you'll know your competition, what kind of products they create and whether there is a demand for this title. Another thing that is worth mentioning is 
that we have like two major types of niches, evergreen niches and seasonal niches. Evergreen niches are those which can be sold throughout the whole year. For example, a coring book about dragon is something that is not strictly related to any time of the year, meaning people could purchase such product practically every single day. On the other hand, seasonal niches are related to popular holidays, for example, like Christmas, Halloween, Thanksgiving, you name it. And these books make sales only during a specific period before that holiday. So now when you know what a niche is, we can try to find one on Amazon. For the next part of this course, I will show you everything using the example of a coloring book. Coloring books are generally a product that is something between low and high content, but they are a perfect choice for both beginners starting on Amazon, as well as more experienced sellers who are not afraid of higher competition and want to make a huge amount of sales on their product. Since I want to keep everything free in this course, I will be showing you only free methods for creating your final product, but if you want to spend some additional money, you can obviously look for some external tools. We're gonna talk a bit about it later in this course, so no worries. Before continuing with the actual niche research, you need to install a browser extension that will allow you to see the BSR of the product. Quick lesson for you on what a BSR is. BSR on Amazon stands for Best Sellers Rank, and it is the number Amazon uses uses to determine how well a product is selling. The lower the BSR, the more consistent sales a product is making. So to help you visualize how it works, let me use a simple KDP sales calculator. We are going to enter the Amazon Marketplace, which in our case would be Amazon.com, and paperback as a book format. Then you can enter the actual BSR. Let's start with something like 200,000, just for example. Next to the number you just typed in, you can see the estimated book sales, which in this case is around two sales per day and like something around 60 sales a month. Now on the other hand, let's enter a much lower BSR, let's say like um, a thousand. Now you can see that a book with this BSR would make around 150 sales per day and even more than 4,000 sales per month which would be a lot when it comes to royalty. Now if you know what the BSR is, we can install a simple browser extension called Helium 10 that allows us to see the BSR on the front page of Amazon search results. This will make more sense in a minute, but for now just register a free account on Helium 10 and after downloading the extension, you can simply enable it in the browser. Obviously, if you don't want to use Helium 10, feel free to install any other Amazon Chrome extension that would allow you to see the BSR on the front page. I'm not promoting Helium and anyhow, I'm just telling you this is the tool I personally use for doing the niche research. Okay, let's continue. So we'll type coloring book as a very broad keyword in the Amazon search results. One thing that's worth mentioning here is that the biggest marketplace on Amazon is obviously the United States marketplace. And this is where we want to aim for the biggest traffic. That is why before searching this keyword, we need to make sure that Amazon shows us only US results in their search ad. And to do that, simply change the postal code in the upper left corner to a US postal code. So you can use, for example, the New York code, which is 13001. So you can copy me here, or you can choose whatever US postal code you like. Now, when we have this entered, we can finally start searching for our potential book. After you click on search, there are a few parameters we need to set. Like first thing we've got to check is the new releases from the last 90 days. Why is that? Because we want to look for new book ideas. You see, it would be awesome to create a current book about cats, but unfortunately there are thousands of products like that on Amazon. We've got to find something more specific nowadays to avoid huge competition. So we gotta find something fresh, some new ideas. Uh, that people came up recently with. Okay, so let's check the 90 days new releases. The next thing we've got to check is to search only for paperback products, as Amazon is obviously not just a place for KDP servers only, and you can see some real publishers that sell their books not through KDP, but for example, through Amazon FBA or independently in any other way. We want to avoid that and look for only Amazon KDP results. That is why on this left panel we have on the website, we are going to check paperback under craft and hobby book format. And now we are ready to start our niche research. We'll be scrolling through these different book ideas. And when you find something interesting, 
we'll need to open another Amazon page and enter the title of this book. So now our extension comes in very handy because we'll still need to verify what is the competition in this niche, but most importantly, if there is a demand in it, how we can check that. So I will be showing you everything here on a real example. So after a bit of scrolling, I found our potential product. The niche is called Dirt by Coloring Book. And let's enter this phrase in the Amazon search engine and see if it is worth it. So on the first page we can see only 139 results. I generally believe that anything up to around 1000 results of competition is going to be a good to start with. And here we can see 139 results. But don't get too excited. Let's check the competition on the third page. Uh, you see Amazon has this sort of a glitch that it shows you not a real competition on the first page of search results. It doesn't happen always, but sometimes it does. And all you need to do is to just check the third page of the search results. So uh, we're gonna do that. I clicked on the third page and here we can see that the competition in this niche is around 1000 products, which is still great. As I mentioned, anything up to 1000 results is a great place to start. And now we need to check what are the BSRs of the products in this niche. So after enabling Helium 10, above every product you can see that we've got this BSR number. This is where this extension comes in handy because we don't need to open every single product in another page, scroll down through the page details on Amazon and check the BSR, but instead we have everything here on the front page of our search results. We can see that a couple of products have around 100k and some even below that number. It means that there is a demand in this niche and we can create a great product here. My little tip is, ideally you need to find a niche that has at least a couple of products with low BSRs, meaning at least under 200 or 300,000 BSR. Because then we can be sure that this book sell consistently every month. And here we've got like at least 4 or 5 products under 300k BSR, which is really good. We can use this niche to create our product. So now it is finally time to create our book interior. We're going to start by creating the actual coloring pages and then we can continue with the rest, like the opening page. I'm gonna tell you what the blank pages are and the final page that we're gonna ask a customer for a review. Don't worry, we're going to go through it step by step so you can follow along. But first, let's stick to the actual illustrations in our coloring book. So to create a coloring page, you have a couple of options. The first option is to pay someone to draw the illustrations for you, which can be quite expensive, so we won't be doing that in this course. The second option is to use some paid AI image generation like Midjourney to create high quality coloring pages. These options can turn out to be really, really good. Midjourney is creating some exceptional artworks. You would need to pay for the tool which can range from like $10 per month to even $100 per month on a subscription. So the third option which I'm going to use is 100% free, as of now at least, and will allow us to create nice coloring pages just as quickly as with a paid tool. So we are going to be using a website called Tensor.art. So Tensor.art is an online AI image generator with hundreds of different AI models that will allow us to create our illustrations. So first go to Tensor.art and log in through your Google account. Then after you are logged in, you will receive 50 free credits for creating AI images, but these reset every day. Alternatively, once you run out of credits, you can just create another account and get another 50 free credits, though I can't encourage you to do that as it may go against the website's policy. <laughs> All right, so after you are logged in, click on create, and there are a couple of things we need to set. So first, let's choose a basic model for our outcome image. I usually choose line art scale up, which is based on a stable diffusion tree model and it works best for me but feel free to experiment with different models there are like hundreds of different models here next you will need to add some LoRa so basically LoRa is an extension to the basic model that tells it how to generate a specific images I'm going to be using the animal coloring book version 2 LoRa and don't worry it works not only for animal illustrations it works for any other things as well and please keep in mind that some LoRa's won't work for every basic model so if you change your basic model you might not see the LoRa I am using right now 
After selecting a specific LoRa, you might notice that TensorArt would like to change some recommended settings, so in this case I don't want to change our settings because this would change the basic model we are using, so let's click on cancel and don't accept the changes. Next we need to set the aspect ratio for our outcome image, so the most popular book sizes on KDP are either 8.5 by 11 inches or 6 by 9 inches. I prefer to use the 8.5 by 11 inches but feel free to use whatever you like. In my case, to have the 8.5 by 11 inches aspect ratio, we need to choose a specific width and height for the image. So you can copy me or go to any free aspect ratio calculator to find the right resolution for you. In my case, it's going to be 1096 by 1507 pixels and the rest of settings should stay as they are. Now we need to choose how much influence our LoRa should have on our basic model. So let's say something between 0.5 and 0.8 should work here, but feel free to experiment. Here comes the most important part. We need to create a prompt for our image, which is essentially telling our model what we want to create. And I would encourage you to use something like ChatGPT to help you with creating a detailed prompt. If you want to see example, this is the prompt it has generated for me. And this was the one that after a couple of changes worked really great in my case. Feel free to experiment if you see that the outcome is not looking good and you see some particular things are not going your way. So for example, maybe the lines are too bold on the illustrations, change the prompt as you like and eventually you should be able to create a perfect coloring page. One very important thing to add to your prompt are the trigger words you see on this left panel after choosing the LoRa. So without them, your LoRa simply won't work. So after typing your prompt, just click on add all and the trigger words will be added at the end of your prompt. All right, let's start experimenting with the settings and generate our illustrations. You can choose whether you want to generate one page or two pages per generation. I'm going to choose two pages per generation and after like a minute or so you will see your generated images ready. If you are not satisfied with the outcome try changing the prompt as I mentioned or adjusting the LoRa slider and if you are happy with the results you can save your images just click on one of the images and find the download button. After you've created a plenty of good looking coloring pages in my case it was around 20 but you can of course create more than that we can start vectorizing our images. So even though our illustrations look great already, they are still pixelated when zoomed in and this will affect the quality of our book when printed. That is why we need to convert them into either high resolution files, so like high resolution PNG formats, or vectorize them. Vector graphics don't have a resolution, which means no matter how large your image becomes, the quality remains the same. You can go to the website called recraft.ai. Please note that this website offers a free option for vectorizing images while I am recording this video. If you are watching this like a couple months later and you don't see this option, unfortunately you need to find an alternative but for now it works perfectly. So Recraft is generally a simple tool where we can vectorize up to 50 images per day for free. You just need to log into your Google account, same as we did on the TensorArt, and you'll receive 50 free daily credits. All you need to do is click on the import image icon and upload your image one by one. After the image is uploaded, click on the vectorize option from the small panel above the image, and the image will be vectorized in like a few seconds. You can even zoom in and see that the quality stays the same no matter how much you are zoomed in. Once the process is complete you can choose how many colors you want to keep in your image. On the left side of the page there is a slider that allows you to adjust number of colors. In my case I usually stick to two colors so only black and white but you can choose maybe three or four colors it doesn't actually really matter that much because our final product will still be only black and white. After choosing the number of colors, you can save your image. So you just need to click on the image and then click on export in upper right corner of the website. And here you've got two options. You can either export it as a PNG file in whatever resolution you like, since it is already vectorized, we can choose the resolution you like, or also we can export it to a SVG format, which is used for vector graphics. Now, you might be wondering 
if we can actually export image here to a vector file, why would we even use something like PNG? PNG consists of pixels, so why would we use it instead of uh, like vector file? And the thing here is, sometimes your vector file will be over 3 megabytes and you won't be able to upload it to Canva because Canva generally accepts SVG files up to 3 megabytes and compressing vector graphics to a smaller size may be harder than you think. So if your image is over 3 megabytes, you can simply export it to high resolution PNG. I don't think there are some limitations when it comes to PNG files on Canva. So now that we have all of our images upscaled or vectorized, we can start creating the final book interior, so the booked manuscript. Here is the basic concept of our book. We want to have an opening page, which will be something like a welcoming page. Next, we we'll also need to create a page where people can put their name, something to encourage a customer interaction. Then we can start adding our coloring pages with black frames. Very importantly, we need to add something called a blank page. This is going to be page put after every page with the actual illustration to color. And this is because Amazon prints paper is quite thin and coloring pencils or whatever our customer is using can sometimes bleed through. So uh, we add these blank pages after each illustration, after actually each page. Now that we understand the concept, let's start creating our interior. We'll be using Canva to create our interior. So first go to Canva, create a new product, add a custom dimensions. In our case, dimensions are going to be 8.5 by 11 inches. So we can select that here on the project settings and just create our project. So for the first page, I'll add a simple motorbike graphic from Canva. I will include the title of our book and the author's name below. This page is just to make our book more professional. When you open like a professionally created book, it doesn't start with the illustration straight away. We need to have some, some opening page like we do have here. Next, for the second page, I create finally our blank page. So this one will be repeated throughout the entire interior. You can create a few variations of blank page, but I'm a bit lazy, so I'll just create one. For blank pages, I like to use patterns, something that fills the page easily. I'll crop it to the size of the frame and we can move on to the third page. The third page will be something to interact with the customer. So let's create a space for the owner's name. I usually add a line like, um, this book belongs to or something like that. Create few lines for the customer to fill in their name and we are good here. We can also add some graphics related to the books theme and now it looks just perfect. After the third page, we can simply add our blank page again. This process will be repeated throughout the book as I mentioned before. So now we can upload our vectorized images to Canva, then adjust them to the freight size of our coloring page and add blank page after each illustration. Please remember that the illustrations should go on the odd numbers pages. On the other hand, the blank pages should go on the even numbered pages. This is because of the book structure. We want the illustrations on the right size. And since we are opening book from right to left, it's easier to color it on the right side. That is why we need to have our illustrations on the odd number pages. After adding all of our illustrations, we can create the final page where we thank the customer for purchasing the product and encouraging them to leave a review. Keep it simple. Don't force anyone to leave a five-star review. Just ask politely if they can leave one. You can also include a QR code linking to your author's page on Amazon Central so people can check out your other products. But this is not like an obligatory step. So this is more or less how you create the interior. Now let's take care of the book's cover. Now for the book's cover, we first need to check what size it should be in. To do that, we need to go to the Amazon cover calculator. I'll leave the link down in the description so you don't need to find it on the internet. Here, all you need to do is to select the binding type. In our case, this is going to be paperback because we are creating paperback. If you are creating hardcover, just select hardcover here. For the interior type, I would select black and white because we are creating a coloring book. So this is going to be black and white only. The paper type will be white paper. Cream paper is generally used for reading only and the reading direction should be left to right. The measurement units should be in inches and the interior and trim size will depend on the dimensions you've used for your illustrations. So remember I chose 
8.5 by 11 inches and I am going to select the same size here. The last piece of information you need to provide here is the page count. In my case I'm going to choose 50 pages so my book is going to have like 50 pages total then click on calculate dimensions and then on download template. You will see that zip file has been downloaded and inside you'll have two versions of your cover template one in PDF format and the other one in the PNG format. Simply extract the PNG file to your desktop or whatever location you like and we'll take care of it in a minute. Now let's go back to our cover calculator. Here you can see the width and height next to where it says full cover. Copy these dimensions and create a new Canva project with them. Same as we did with the interior. Go to Canva, click on create a design, then click on custom, change the measurements units to inches and type the dimensions from the Amazon website. So in my case it is 17.363 by 11.25 inches. Once we have our cover project created we can upload the PNG file of our cover template that we saved on desktop. Here you will see that if you stretch this template it will perfectly match our project dimensions. So if it doesn't, it means you did something wrong in the previous steps, so you need to go back and review all of the dimensions. Now for the book cover, we need to create some good looking illustrations that we could use for the front side of our book. Let's go back to the tensor art, change the basic model to stable diffusion free and remove the coloring book LoRa. Then I'm going to replace our LoRa with the Leonardo illustration model. Let's select that. After selecting the LoRa, tensor art will ask if we want to change the set settings to recommend it. Let's change them in this case and now we need to create our new prompt. I'm going to use ChatGPT again to create some prompts for our cover image and after the prompt has been generated we can create a couple of illustrations. Choose the best one, download it and again the illustrations are not in the highest quality possible so we'll need to upscale them. You can use the website like I Love IMG to upscale your images. You can upscale your image there even up to 4x for free. So I'm gonna do that. Now let's go back to Canva. Here comes the tricky part. You need to make your cover look interesting. There is no wrong approach. You simply need to try for some time to learn how to do it. So I am going to add our upscale illustration to our project and try to create some nice cover. Please remember that the right side of the cover template is going to be the front side of our book and the left side will be the back side of our book. So I've added our illustrations, now we can add some book title using a good looking font and on the back side of our book I'm going to keep it really really simple. Let's add some brown color and maybe include a couple of interior illustrations so people can see how the book looks inside and that is it. We have successfully created our cover. The last part is to export the cover and the interior from Canva to PDF format. When exporting you'll see the two types of PDF formats, PDF standard and PDF print. I recommend using a PDF print as it will have a slightly better appearance after printing. In this short section I'm going to explain what the faded cover problem is on Amazon KDP. So after exporting your cover from Canva it sometimes appears faded on Amazon. It has this weird feeling like it lacks saturation. Unfortunately I only know one solution to this problem which is opening your PDF cover in Adobe Photoshop and then exporting it to Adobe Photoshop PDF format. If you face this issue you can also search on the internet for alternative solutions. Some people try using a PNG format on their cover instead of PDF but personally it didn't make a difference for me. Only the Adobe Photoshop PDF version of my cover started having these natural colors on the Amazon page. So this section is the first part of the book upload process on Amazon. You've exported your interior and cover to PDF formats. We can now start uploading our final product to KDP. After registering on the website, I'm not going to show you how to register because it doesn't make any sense. It is super simple to do that. And after registration, go to your bookshelf on Amazon KDP, then click on this big button which says create and choose your book format. So in our case, this will be paperback format but if you're creating hardcover please choose hardcover here. Now the first thing we need to take care of is our book's title. The title is incredibly important on Amazon because it will be one of the most powerful SEO keywords you can have. If you generally want to use any important keywords to add to your book let's add them here. 
and I'm going to show you a free method of creating a good SEO title but if you have money to spend you can purchase tools like Helium 10 premium version where you will be able to check the search volume and competition for every keyword. Okay so using my method we will copy the titles of the four lowest BSR bestsellers rank books from the search results on Amazon. So I'm gonna again type dirt by coloring book on Amazon search results and simply as I said before copy the titles of the four lowest BSR books. After that go to ChatGPT and ask it to use all the keywords from these four titles and create a single title without repeating keywords. Generally the structure I use is to put the main title of the book in the title section with the rest of the keywords in the subtitle. So in my case, it will be something like dirt by coloring book for the kids. This will be the title and the rest of the keywords from ChatGPT will go into the subtitle. I know this method isn't perfect, but it is the fastest and for me the most logical option to create a title. We are using keywords from the other books that are already selling well on Amazon. So we have some guarantee that these keywords actually work. The next thing I am going to add is the author's name of our book. Now, this doesn't need to be a real name. You can come up with something different. Just make sure that the name you choose is not copyrighted. You don't want to use a real publisher's name. So I'm going to create something simple. You could just enter the first part of your brand name in this first name section and the second part in the last name section. And that is it. You have successfully added the author's name. Now let's create a description. A very common mistake people make here is focusing too much on SEO for the description but what people don't know is that descriptions on Amazon do not have that much of an effect on your books rankings so basically you can just use ChatGPT to create some grammatically correct text that will describe what your book is about what it includes how many pages there are and how many of those pages are the actual illustrations in my case something simple you can also add a small call to action at the end of your description my quick tip here is to not use something very obvious like by now uh, be a bit more creative with it then you can make your descriptions look more appealing by bolding out the header adding bullet points or using like underscore something like that one more thing to remember is that amazon guidelines forbid the use of emojis in your description so if you were thinking about using them just don't it's not worth risk of getting banned. Then you can simply select that you own the publishing rights to your book and check whether it contains any explicit content. Now we need to choose the categories you should use. Here is the thing. Back in the day, people would use very low competition categories to rank first and earn the best sellers batch on Amazon. Don't do it. People are now getting banned for using incorrect categories. So please choose up to three categories that truly describe your book. Here are the three categories I chose and like don't overcomplicate it. SEO, focus, title and subtitle are far more important than categories. So don't try to trick the system here. Next part is quite important. This gives us the opportunity to add seven additional keywords that describe our book. This is optional, but actually I don't know any seller who wouldn't use it. So here are my tips for these seven keywords. The first tip is to don't use any keywords from your title. It just doesn't make sense to repeat them as you are already using them in one place. There is absolutely no need to repeat them here. Don't spam random keywords. Why is that? You see, the seven keywords work differently from the keywords in your title. The keywords from the title can be searched independently. For example, if I have a book titled Dirt Bike Coloring Book for Kids, Motorbike Illustrations for Children, my book can be searched using various keywords like Motorbike Coloring Book for Kids or Dirt Bike Illustrations. The, the keywords don't need to be next to each other. On the other hand, these additional keywords won't mix. If you type a keyword in the first field, it won't be searched with other keywords from another field. That is why I believe it's better to use a real long tail keywords here instead of like spamming random words in every section. So here's how I approach these fields. After choosing these additional keywords, you can proceed to the second page, the book content page. Here you'll need to first add an Amazon ISBN number. If you don't have one, just simply click on assign ISBN. I choose the paperback type, in our case it's going to be black and white. Choose the dimensions of our interior, in my case as you probably 
probably already know, it's 8.5 by 11 inches and select whether you need bleed or no bleed settings. Since we've used a frame on our images and they do not extend beyond the page area, we can select no bleed. However, as Amazon states, if your images or illustrations extend to the page's edge, you should use the bleed option. Next, you need to choose between a glossy or matte cover finish if your cover is very dark, so close to black, I recommend choosing a glossy finish because otherwise your book will get fingerprints over time. If it is not dark, you can choose whatever you like. I'm just going to go with glossy this time. Now it's time to simply upload your PDF interior and your PDF cover. After that, you can select whether you used a external AI generator to create the book. In our case, we used an AI tool to generate the images. So in this section, I select many AI generated images with minimal editing and we'll add the name of the tool, which is TensorArt. For the final step, click on launch preview. You may need a couple of minutes for the preview to load, depending on the size of your cover and interior files. But once it's loaded, review the final book and check if everything is within the printing lines if everything looks good, accept it and proceed to the last page, which is paperback rights and pricing. So here you can choose if you want to sell your book on all Amazon marketplaces, which I recommend because you'll get much better exposure. So I'm just gonna click on all marketplaces. Then you can choose the price of your book. To choose the right price, I recommend checking the prices of your competitors. So what I do here is I launch my book at a slightly lower price. For example, if your competitors are selling a similar book for like $7.99, you can price yours at like $6.99. Later I'll talk a bit about pricing strategies and how you should raise your price, but for now just choose a price that's a bit lower than your competition's average. There is also an option for expanded distribution as we read on Amazon, enrolling in expanded distribution means large distributors can add your book to their catalog online retailers outside of Amazon, libraries, universities and booksellers will have the option to purchase your book from these distributors. In essence, this means additional sales for you. So if the option is available, I recommend checking it. Please remember that sales through expanded distributions will have much smaller royalties. So probably you'll receive like maybe 20% of what you receive by a normal sale. All right, after choosing your price, it is finally time to publish your book on Amazon. So just click on publish and after publishing your book, it won't be immediately available on Amazon. It needs to pass Amazon reviews process, which can take a couple of days or sometimes even up to a week. I think like something around a week was my longest review time. But once your book is published, you'll receive an email confirming that people can now purchase it on Amazon. Please keep in mind that it will take some time for your book to be visible under certain keywords, so this won't happen instantly, don't expect sales after just one or two days, but you will get there with some time. After uploading your book on Amazon, you can change the description, cover, interior, additional keywords, categories and price. However, it is important to know that you cannot change the title, subtitle or author's name. You can do this, I believe, if you are uploading an ebook, but for paperback and hardcover versions, you make sure title is grammatically correct and that you've used all the SEO keywords you wanted to. If you want to change something and if you change something, your book will remain live on Amazon, but the changes will go through the review process, which take like a couple days again. Same review process as it was when it comes to publishing your book. One thing here worth mentioning is that Please remember that changing anything after publishing your book can negatively impact your ranking. I've had like instances where changing the cover caused my book to stop selling. I generally recommend making any changes right after your book is published. Don't wait too long after it is ranked high and has some reviews. Just do it right after the upload. So this is the section for Amazon ads. Amazon ads weren't intentionally part of this guide because they require your money and you can lose a lot of money if you are not a experienced seller. However, I decided to add a video for this section explaining the general Amazon ads. So this is one of my older videos, but this is the only Amazon ads strategy I use. I still believe this is the most logical approach to Amazon ads. So I'm going to play you a quick 15 minutes video about Amazon ads now. Hi guys, today I'm going to show you exactly how to do the somehow advanced strategy for Amazon ads. I guarantee you that this is probably one of the most professional approaches to Amazon ads without 
without using any external tools. So you won't need to spend a single dollar for some external tool uh, for Amazon ads. So if we just go here um, into this section, so you see this all the search results on Amazon, probably a lot of them using Amazon ads. So basically these sellers are paying for the clicks on their products. I see a lot of you, uh, especially beginners on Amazon, on KDP, uh, Merged by Amazon, are trying to do the Amazon ads to promote their products, but they are not very successful. Uh, so for example, you are spending so much money, like um, hundreds and thousands of dollars on products that just do not convert well. So uh, today I'm gonna show you a very good approach that is gonna be quite like general, so you can use it to any sort of product on Amazon. It doesn't need to be especially coloring book. It can be a, a t-shirt. It can be also some, some different products from Amazon FBA. So this is like a very general approach to Amazon ads, but it's really, really working. So let's get right into it. All right, guys, so before we start with this video, before we start explaining the whole strategy, we'll need to do something which is really but really important and trust me long term you're gonna be uh, thanking me for showing you this so the first thing you gotta do when launching a campaign is just you need to go to this left panel on the amazon ads then click on measurement and reporting and click on sponsored ads reports after you click here what you need to do is just click on create report and here uh, we're gonna create the ads for the sponsored products so just leave it as it is report time search terms country um, it's obviously united states right now time unit a summary you can just leave it as summary report period last 30 days is gonna be completely fine because what we're gonna be doing is just setting the request time for recurring and the frequency is going to be set to monthly so every month you will need the report from the last 30 days of your campaign and this is really important why because generally on amazon uh, you can check the search term sections so you can check what keywords amazon used for your campaign what keywords uh, converted the best only for the last 65 days so you can check like um, data for the whole year that's why what you need to do is just set up some recurring reports, which are really, really important in this case. The first thing that you need to do is just go to your Amazon ads panel. And after doing that, you'll need to create a campaign. So you can just click here on create a campaign. You can also do it directly from the, um, for example, Amazon KDP page. Uh, but just for general use of this method, I'm gonna keep it here. So let's just click on create a campaign and then you can choose the type of the campaign. So uh, journey on Amazon, we have two types, is a sponsored products type and sponsored brands type. I think the most common approach is to use sponsored products. They are quite easier at the beginning to understand. You don't need to also create the whole ad for your product. So we're just gonna go uh, with this type right now. So here, choose the sponsored products and click on continue. And here we are in this campaign builder. So the first thing you just gotta choose is the ad format. So for example, you have the custom text ad and also the standard ad. So how you can approach this is is just I prefer to use the custom text ad because like I think personally that if Amazon gives you the option to generally add something to your ad for free why not to use it so I'm just gonna choose the custom text ad and then uh, what you can choose is a product uh, obviously you can see my products right here these are my KDP books but I don't wanna uh, show them to to everyone. So uh, you just need to choose one of the products simply that you want to advertise. You can also choose like a multiple ones, but I would be pretty careful with it. If they are not like similar products, if they are not um, targeting the same audience, uh, I wouldn't put too many products into one ad. So next thing is the targeting. Uh, so generally this approach, uh, more or less, so you can understand the strategy. So this approach is to start with the automatic campaign and then gradually convert into manual targeting. So first we're gonna create the automatic campaign that's gonna search uh, what type of keywords we need to use for our manual campaign that converts on our product. So I see a lot of people just going to Fiverr, typing KDP ads, and for example, uh, using such gigs, like for example, I will create and manage your 
KDP sponsored ads campaign for you. And the problem with this approach is that these people are gonna research for you some keywords that are somehow related to your product. But the thing is that you shouldn't be using more than 10 keywords per manual campaign and they're gonna give you like 50 to 200 different keywords this is simply you won't have a budget to spend on so many keywords and the other thing is that when you're starting the manual campaign from the scratch uh, you don't actually know what kind of keywords will be good for your product so where you will have the best conversion rate so i think the first thing you gotta do is to really create the automatic campaign to pick these keywords for you okay coming back to our campaign uh, manager so uh, let's go for targeting automatic targeting and then you can choose the default bits here is the simple thing i do i just go for the set bits by targeting group and I completely disable the substitutes and complements because generally these are um, usually waste of money and even though if you're gonna leave them on uh, probably they won't generate any clicks or even if they will it's gonna be like one to two clicks so uh, I just I'm just gonna disable them at the start so we are left with the close match and the loose match and here is the thing i like the approach when we are starting from a very small bit so 75 cents is gonna be definitely too much especially for the coring book in this case um, if you are advertising some some products that will have much higher bids like for example um i don't know some amazon fba product you're selling uh, something for a dog, some toy for a dog. Uh, obviously, this sort of products will have much higher bids than coring book on KDP because they are more expensive and you're making much more profit on them. And also the competition is usually much higher. Here we are, the close match. And what we're gonna do here is I'm just gonna put like 21 cent and in the loose match also 21 cent. Uh, we're not gonna think about it too much. Here is the thing, here is my little tip. If the campaign will generate a very small number of impressions, so you'll get like 100 impressions a day and zero clicks, then you obviously need to increase the bid because that means that in this niche, you just cannot advertise for such low bid. But okay, negative keyword targeting. Uh, usually when you are starting out, you don't put anything here because basically you don't know any negative keyword yet the campaign so here are the few options and i think we're gonna stick to the most common one which is dynamic bits down only this means that uh you have the little description here amazon will lower your bits in real time when your ad may be less likely to convert to a sale so this is probably the safest option here so we're just gonna click on down dynamic bits down only and here you have a little settings uh, daily budget i usually put around five dollars if you don't have five dollars to spend daily uh, you can just put two to three dollars that's that's completely fine um the campaign name just choose whatever you like a start date and end date uh, and pretty much we are done you just click on launch the campaign all right so here we are in this little spreadsheet i created for the purposes on this video so the thing is that after running uh, our automatic campaign for let's say like a month or two we need to really give it some time because generally the more data you have the better manual campaign you will be able to create so um we have this automatic campaign data and let's say we've got a couple of keywords the general rule is that you will need to test every keyword around eight to ten clicks so let's say we have a coloring book about mermaids and you have this keyword one which can be for example mermaid coloring book for kids it has generated around eight to ten clicks and it hasn't generated a single order so that's when I'm starting considering removing this keyword. So putting it into negative keywords and not advertising for it ever again. And especially not bringing it into our manual campaign. Because simply, it seems like this keyword won't convert into sales in our case. But when it comes to 8 to 10 clicks rule, don't take it too seriously. Like first, just give it a bit more clicks all right at the beginning we can just give it from like a 10 to 15 clicks or even 10 to 20 clicks but the general idea is that if it doesn't convert into an order 
uh, you just you're just gonna delete it from the campaign and not put into our manual campaign my point is don't take these numbers like very seriously i just cannot give you the exact numbers when the keyword is gonna generate a sale because for example you can assume that from 8 to 10 clicks so let's just put 8 to 10 clicks here um, and if it in after 10 clicks you don't have any orders you're gonna delete this keyword but what happened if on the 11th click you'll get two orders from this keyword suddenly it completely changes the look of this keyword so the thing is that um use the approximate numbers like first give it a good go so around 10 clicks start considering removing these keywords but around 10 to 15 clicks uh you can really remove it from your campaign but on the other hand let's say we have the second keyword which has generated five to ten clicks but it has made one order so this is a very good indication that we can use this keyword in our manual campaign uh, for the future and the whole point of doing this automatic campaign is to gather around eight to ten keywords so after we have like ten different keywords that are generating sales uh, with some small amount of clicks these are going to be the perfect keywords for our manual campaign and after gathering this um, data what you need to do is just create a manual campaign which i'm going to also show you in this video so we're going back to this uh, panel when you can choose your campaign type and click again on the sponsored products type after clicking on it uh, you can still leave the custom text ad because as I say some custom text added for free uh, is always worth it instead choosing the automatic targeting you're gonna click on manual targeting and here you can click on keyword targeting because we are not necessarily paying attention to product targeting in this case so here you have the keyword targeting panel that may seem to be a little complicated at the beginning but trust me it is not uh, you can for example go to the enter list and here you can add any keywords uh, you like here you have the match type so what are the match types as you can read the match types allow you to fine tune which customer search terms trigger your ads if you are using the exact keywords from the automatic campaign i would suggest to stick with only phrase and exact keywords why why is that because generally what broad means is that if you are targeting your product for let's say mermaid coloring book for kids it will also use these keywords for example for mermaid coloring book so it will broaden the the whole phrase to the um to the bigger audience but I think when we have researched like practically the exact keywords our ads is converting for, we can use only the phrase and exact, if not only exact, you can also try it. But, but I usually leave these two on, so phrase and exact. And after that, you're just gonna copy this best keywords from your, from your automatic campaign. So here you can, for example, um, click on mermaid coloring book for kids, click on add keyword. Uh, and you will need to choose the bid. So let's say um, 21 add a keyword and you have the mermaid coloring book for kids for the match type phrase and for the match type exact. All right, so we are with the pricing strategies. There are various pricing strategies for your book. Here's what I do to ensure my book's price is raised at the right time. Let's say if you price your book at this $6.99 and the important thing is don't increase the price too quickly after lunch. What I do is I recommend waiting until the first couple of reviews come in. Once your book has reviews, it establishes some sort of position on the marketplace, especially if there are five star reviews. So wait some time before increasing the price. Next, don't raise the price by more than $1 at a time. Raising the price by like let's say $3 can suddenly cause your sales to drop. You will lose traction in Amazon algorithm and it will be difficult to recover your previous position. So what I recommend is raising the price for no more than once per month and only by small amounts like up to $1. Another pricing trick is using figures like $6.99 or $6.95 instead of like simply typing $7.00. So using these small pricing tricks 
make your product look a bit cheaper. Everybody use them on Amazon and you should use them too. This is a well-known marketing strategy. After your book is published, it can take some time to be searchable under various keywords. Once about like two or three weeks have passed, you can check if it's indexed under those keywords. Like professionally, we don't say the book is searchable, but rather it is indexed under specific keywords, just so you understand. Nowadays, you don't need to manually check every keyword to see if your book shows up, but you can use a simple browser extensions to check it automatically. Again, this is a bit of an additional lesson, so I'll share with you one of my older videos where I explain how to do it. Today I want to discuss a very important topic when it comes to uploading book to Amazon marketplaces. So if your book is indexed under certain keywords, not many people check that and what actually it means, you'll understand the whole concept of it in this one video. So like first of all, what does it mean that books has been indexed under certain keyword? Generally, after you upload a book on Amazon, for example, you upload coloring book for kids, being indexed under certain keyword means that your book is actually searchable on the marketplace. For example, if I create a book about like, let's say dinosaur coloring book for kids, it won't be visible instantly after uploading it to KDP. It's gonna take some time, maybe a few days, maybe sometimes even a few weeks. And it's really important to check that after you upload the book so you make sure that people can actually search this book on Amazon. So let me just give you an example. I typed coloring book for kids here on Amazon and you can see a plenty of different books. Let's just take one example. Uh, maybe it can be this book, okay? I'm gonna click on it and what you need to do to check if it is uh, indexed under certain keywords. You could do it manually, so you could just enter um, coloring book for kids and now try to search for your book but sometimes it may be very time consuming because look we've got 60,000 different results here so uh, it's probably like hundreds of different pages with different products it's gonna be super time consuming to check all of them so instead what we'll be doing is we'll be using some very simple Chrome extension that's gonna do it automatically for us as I mentioned let's take uh, this book as an example I've just opened it on another page and for a fact we know that it is for sure indexed under a coloring book for kids keyword. So what you need to do is to download a very simple Chrome extension called Amazon Data Studio. And here, simply by entering SIN number, we can check if our book is indexed under a certain keyword, okay? So um, I'm just gonna do that. Let us let me go back to this book and scroll down to the bottom of the page where you can see the SIN number. So now I've just selected, copy it. Oh, wait, without this additional space at the beginning. Let me just copy that and and um, paste it here. Obviously, you can also select the marketplace. So um, we are checking it on amazon.com, but maybe you are creating a book for, for example, amazon.uk. So a book for UK or maybe for Canadian Amazon, you can also check that here. And after that, we're gonna check what keyword it should be indexed under. So for example, I type the current book for kids and we know for a fact that this book is actually indexed under this keyword. So let me uh, also put it here, coloring book for kids. And now what you need to do is to click on check all variation and simply click on check ranking. What you're gonna see here is that the page is loading. Uh, so Amazon's data studio is loading the result. And you can see here that our book is indexed. You've got this little Y here, uh, which stands for yes, it's indexed. Here you can see the keyword, which we are checking the rank of the book. So our book is indexed on the first page under number 15. So like counting from the start is the 15th product on Amazon search results. I don't pay that much of attention to the number here because this may differ, for example, from the location you are searching this data. So the important thing is that it is positioned on the page one. Obviously, you could also check the search volume and the purchase volume, but this is included in the only pro plan of this Chrome extension. And what we can do next is, for example, check some completely different keyword, which this book shouldn't be indexed under and let me check if it's gonna really work so let me let me say uh, what is this book about this book is about food drink and sweets coloring book for adults and kids for example it shouldn't be indexed under like pregnancy journal right so let me type pregnancy journal 
for new moms okay let, let's do that and click on check ranking so here you can see that our extension actually searched for this book under this keyword it went through all of the pages and you can see that it is not indexed under these keywords at least it's not in the top 300 products so it's not on the first three pages of amazon search results and uh, apparently it does not check even further so what you should be doing after uploading your book you should wait a couple of days like let's say uh, maybe one to two weeks and after that you should be checking uh, if it is indexed under many keywords so how you can do that I'm gonna also show you here type um, for example coloring um, coloring book for kids as we did before and here you can actually hit enter and start from a new line to enter another keyword so let me check food food coloring book and what else sweets coloring book it should also be indexed under this one and maybe let's enter some completely different keywords not related to this book fitness tracker okay and now we can just click again on check rankings and it's gonna check all of these uh, certain keywords for you. So here are the results uh, for the first three keywords. As we expected, it's all indexed here for coloring book for kids, for food coloring book, for sweets coloring book. It is indexed. You can see that it is actually uh, searchable on uh, page one on every keywords. This is number one. You can also check that. So if we're gonna enter food coloring book on Amazon, it should be the first position that comes up in our search results. So let's try that. I'm gonna enter this keyword food coloring book and as you can see it's here on the number one position so the extension works great on the other hand on the fitness tracker it hasn't been indexed this is very important to do something like that you just need to gather all of these keywords you can enter up to 200 keywords so enter like at least 30 to 50 different keywords and see where there is a potential to improve and now i just want to tell you how you can actually benefit from checking this all of these um, indexes and all of these different keywords here if i'm gonna check like um, multiple keywords here we're gonna see that for example our book is being searchable on page number one on other keywords it's gonna be also searchable on page number one but maybe there is another important keyword that we would like to be ranked on on the first page but we are not maybe there is a keyword for this book where it is ranked on page number seven or eight and then you can run some specific ads for your book to try to make some sales under certain keywords and being ranked on it on page number one so this is how you can benefit from doing this index checking using this extension if you want to physically see your book remember that you can't order your book directly on amazon because it's against their policy however you can order a discounted author's copies which won't affect your bsr these author's copies will allow you to purchase your book for a much cheaper price how to do that simply after your book is published click on these three dots next to your book and select order author's copy then you'll be able to choose the amazon marketplace from which to order your book and in a short period of time, you'll have a physical copy of your book at home. One more important thing to know is how Amazon pays out your earnings. So Amazon KDP uses a two month payout system, meaning you will be paid for the amount you've earned by the end of the month, two months ago. Uh, I know that probably after what I've just said, it doesn't make sense at all, but I give you a simple example. Uh, if you earned $100 in September, you will be paid in the last week of November. So like it's two months after this month, you have earned this money. It is not very complicated, but I thought it is worth mentioning in this video because you may be wondering why you haven't received the money at the end of the month. So in reality, uh, you will need to wait two more months. This is just a simple Amazon on security system for people who are for example trying to use some copyrighted content so let's say you create a marvel coloring book try to make as many sales as possible and just get paid and after get banned so here is practically impossible because this during this two months period you will be banned for sure and you won't receive any royalties. So this is the, going to be the last section of this course. I'm going to answer some of the most frequently asked questions in KDB community. So let's get started. 
Yes, KDP is completely free. The only thing you might pay for are the Amazon ads or some external tools like Helium 10 or any other external tools. Uh, they can be used, for example, for researching different keywords, but KDP itself is free. This is a tricky question, but if you follow my guide correctly, you could start making your first sales within the first month on KDP. This will depend on the quality of the product you create, the demand in these niches you choose, and the time of the year. So for example, Q4, which is the last three months of the year, includes Halloween, Black Friday, and Christmas, which can lead to more sales. But generally, with a bit of hard work, you can make living out of KDP. No, you cannot use KDP after getting banned. Some people try to create new accounts using VPN systems. That is not a long-term solution. After you are banned, you cannot use Amazon KDP at all. No, you cannot have multiple KDP accounts. You can use multiple authors name, but not multiple KDP accounts. All right, guys, that is it. I've prepared for this course. Let me know in the comments if you managed to watch the whole video. It took me many, many hours, more like many, many days to create this course. And I hope you enjoyed it and found it helpful. I encourage you to check the video description for additional resources. If I skipped any important topics, let me know in the comments. I'll try to help. Thank you so much for watching and I see you again very very soon in one of my next videos. Bye bye!